Yes, the PPE that you're wearing could do more harm than good. Now that I got the clickbait stuff out of the way, I'm Michael Monaco, and I am co-host of the Hazmat Guys podcast. I am a hazardous materials specialist in a very large municipal fire department. I cannot tell you which one because that would violate their social media policy, and I can't do that. However, I can tell you it is one of the largest in the state of New York, and we are the epicenter of everything that's happening with the COVID-19 outbreak. My normal audience for the Hazmat Guys podcast is going to be first responders and hazardous material uh, technicians and specialists throughout the country. Um, I am changing the angle on who we broadcast to right now because walking around, this is uh, 323 of 20, and I'm seeing a tremendous amount of people trying to protect themselves with things like gloves and masks, but they're doing a really bad job of it. So I wanted to give a free general lecture to the public on how to properly wear the PPE that they're looking to wear and to use it in such a way that it doesn't do more harm than good. So absolutely take these next 10 to 15 minutes, watch what we have to say uh, and implement what we have to say. So the first thing that I want to go through are going to be the gloves. Uh, One of the things that I see is people putting on the gloves and then they're just kind of going about their day. Uh, That would be great, except the gloves are not there to protect your hands. The gloves are there to keep your hands clean so that you can do something else right away with your hands when you need to. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Let's say I am um, working in a grocery store. I walk out, and I put my gloves on. As I go through my day, my gloves are being contaminated. Um, They could have virus on them. They could have bacteria. Let's just say for the purpose of this, they get covered in COVID-19 virus uh, or novel coronavirus. So they are fully contaminated, and now I go and I touch a personal object. I answer my cell phone. I dig through my wallet. Uh, I touch my face inadvertently, which happens a lot when you're wearing two gloves. I have just transferred all the viruses that are on my hands now onto my persons, my clothing, my wallet, my cell phone, my face. This is not the intention of gloves. The intention of gloves is to do something, get them dirty, and then remove them so that my hands are now clean. That's the purpose of the gloves. They are designed for a one-time use. I'm going to do something, I'm going to take them off. If I think of everything in my life right now as a personal space and a public space, my gloves are going to use to touch public space. My hands, I'm going to use to touch personal space. So what would some things Examples that I would use gloves in public spaces for, I would use a glove to touch a door. I would use a glove to touch a cart in the supermarket. I would touch a pin pad with a glove. If I'm going to go to, say, my favorite convenience store and get myself a, um, a Slurpee or a slushy, I am going to my cup that I grab is my personal space. The handle that I use is going to be my private uh, is going to be the public space. As a result, uh, I have personally changed the way that I wear my gloves, and I think it's pretty sound. Uh, You're not going to find this in the CDC, but this is something that we do inadvertently in the hazardous materials world, and that is a clean hand, dirty hand. Uh, We also expand this out to be a clean technician, dirty technician. So clean hand, dirty hand. What exactly does that mean? It means that when I don, which is our fancy jargon for put on, a glove, I'm going to do it on one hand only. The other hand, I'm going to keep clean. This hand is for all of my personal items. This hand is for all of my public items. Uh, Doors, pin pads, all those things that other people could be touching. If I drop something on the floor, I'm going to pick it up with this hand. 
this hand, my credit card, my wallet, my keys, my cell phone, all right? These are all the things that I'm going to do with my personal items out in public. Why separate gloves? Well, it's pretty easy. When I'm wearing two gloves, they feel exactly the same on my hand. One of the problems with both the masks and the gloves for the general public is that we forget we have them. We think that we're safer than we are. We lose our situational awareness very, very easy because we get used to it. And then all of a sudden, we're doing all the things that we would have done without the gloves on, and the gloves are being rendered useless. A uh, perfect example of this is somebody was walking through the supermarket. I'm watching people go through the supermarket. They're getting out of their car with gloves on. They're going through the supermarket with a pair of gloves on. They're checking out with a pair of gloves on. They're paying with a pair of gloves on. They're rifling through their pocketbooks. They're rifling through their jackets. They're touching their, they're shaking their little brats uh, because they just can't stand being with them for so long with their gloves on. They're doing all these things with their gloves on, and all they're doing is transferring the material that's on their gloves to other personal spaces. All right? Remember, the gloves are there not to protect the skin on your hands. They're there to keep your hands clean so that you can use your hands when you need to in case you can't wash for 20 seconds in between doing other things. So I wear the two separate gloves. I will use my credit card with this hand, pick up with this hand. I will go into the supermarket. I will buy stuff. I will touch all the public spaces with this hand. And then when I get to my car, I will load up my car, personal items, or by the time I get to my car, I am going to go ahead and remove my public glove, and now I have all my personal items, and I'm going to go ahead and put them into my personal space, my personal car. I'm going to get into the car with my personal space. I'm going to do my hand sanitizer. Washing your hands for 20 seconds is always best. If you cannot do that, hand sanitizer is the next best thing, okay? So uh, we want to make sure that we are well aware that we have a good hand and a bad hand. We want to touch anything personal with this hand. This is very, very important. And we want to make sure that the gloves are off before we enter personal space. Personal space would be your car. Personal space would be your house, things along those lines. Removing the glove. It's very easy to put the glove on. Nobody screws that up. But taking the gloves off can be a little bit tricky, all right? And if you're in the medical community, you're in the first response world, you're very, very familiar with how to go ahead and take your glove off. If you're not, this is how we go ahead and do it. If you were to have two gloves on, for whatever reason you needed two gloves, the first glove is easy enough. You can pinch it pretty much anywhere, and you can start to remove it, and you invert it inside out. You wrap up the one glove in the other hand. Now, this technique you're going to use as well if you only have one glove on. So if you have one glove on, you're going to bend your wrist a little bit, and it's going to create this little pocket right here. I'm going to slide my finger up that pocket. I'm actually putting my finger into clean space. That's all clean inside there. I'm then going to continue up. I'm going to point away from my face as to not flick anything onto my face, I'm going to invert the glove. Now I can grab the glove pretty much anywhere because I'm grabbing all clean space with my clean hands. Then you're going to take this glove and you're going to put it somewhere either in your car, safe and sound in a container, or you're going to throw it away in the garbage. Don't be a savage. Don't throw them on the floor for some other poor sap to have to pick up. That's not cool. So that's our gloves. Next thing I want to talk about real quick is going to be our respirators. Uh, this is an N95 mask. I'm not here to debate with you whether or not you should be wearing a respirator out in public. Uh, this is not an airborne disease. This is a droplet disease. As a result, there's only certain times that you should be wearing these. Uh, I am not going to sit here and say that if you are in your car wearing an N95 mask all by yourself, that you should seriously contemplate uh, letting your genetic information pass on to the next generation. I will not say that. Uh, I will say that we need to use these sparingly. So here's what we got. This is an N95 mask. This is an N95 mask. This is a P100 mask. 
This is a mask that I can use over and over again with no problem. It has been designed to use over and over again. I can switch out my filters. I can decon this with pretty much any decon solution, and I'm going to be good to go. This is an N95 mask from uh, my local hardware store. This is an N95 mask from uh, the medical community. All right, This is what they're currently wearing in hospital. They're designed to be worn, taken off, and thrown away. They're not designed to be used over and over again. Unfortunately, right now, we don't have a choice in the, both the first response world and the medical world. And I'm sure that if you're wearing one of these at home, you don't have a whole uh, box to go through every time you go out for the next two to three months. Yeah, two to three months. Wrap your heads around that. So um, every time I put this mask on, I deform it a little bit. I break the seal. This seal is supposed to make a nice tight seal up against my face. This is what's going to allow all the air to go through the fabric and filter out any of the aerosolized particles that are containing the COVID-19 virus. This is important because if I don't have this fitting on my face correctly, I am greatly reducing the efficiency of this mask. That means facial hair should be removed if you're going to wear this mask. Um, this is the reason why surgical masks really aren't that great at, at keeping you from uh, contracting this virus because they have huge openings. They're really designed. Surgical masks are really designed to, con to keep your stuff in and prevent you from spreading what you have to other people, not vice versa. Um, so an N95 mask is much better at that at the job of actually protecting you, of doing what you're looking to do. Um, so we want to make sure our faces are clean. We want to make sure we have a good seal. When we breathe in and out of this, we want to feel the face mask suck in a little bit. That's letting us know that we don't have any kind of gaps. Now, uh, in industry, you're supposed to be fitted for this every single year. Um, so you cannot be guaranteed that without going through the fitting process that this fits onto your face correctly. As a result, people are putting these on and they're not even thinking uh, about their situational awareness. They just think they're protected. So as a result, they are feeling comfortable getting close to people. They aren't maintaining the distances. They think that they're safer than they are wearing this mask. And even if this mask were to be 100% effective and you were wearing it properly, you don't have eye shields on, which means if you accidentally walk into somebody's sneeze cloud, those droplets are going into your eyes and you're going to get sick anyway. So this does not protect you as much as you think it does, especially since it doesn't take much to start to lower the efficiency. All right, uh, wearing it, so wear it sparingly. Do not just throw it on to go out to the car. Do not just throw it on when you're at the gas station. If you're maintaining um, your six-foot distance, you don't even need to be wearing this. And I don't say that as like, a, oh, you shouldn't be wasting resources. You shouldn't be wasting your resources. So every time I take this on and off, I lower the efficiency of this. I, I, I make it less protective to me. So if I'm not putting this on and off in situations that I don't need it, then when I do need it, it's going to work a lot better for me. Now, putting this mask on, every set of masks has its own set of directions from the manufacturer. Follow yours. They all are going to have metal bands. These metal bands go over your nose, and you need to press down on them hard. They should be making a very good tight seal with your nose. Even the medical masks are going to have this, even though you can't see it. It's embedded in the fabric itself, but it is definitely there. Nice, tight fit. It should almost hurt after a little while. It should almost start to feel uncomfortable to wear. Uh, that's how tight you want this mask, and then you, you go ahead and you put the bands around your head. Uh, every time you put these bands on, you make them a little bit less stretchy, which means this is fitting a little bit less tight up against your face. Again, use it when you need it. Uh, because if you just use it all the time, it won't be effective for the moments and the times that you really actually need it, like when this starts to get a lot worse than it already is. Taking the mask off. All right. Uh, because we're reusing disposable masks, um, 
because we are considering what is public space and what is and what is private space, um, we need to be very careful when we doff these masks. Doffing is our fancy word of taking them off. So when I doff this mask, I need to consider a couple things. One, are my hands clean when I'm taking this mask off? Are my hands clean when I touch the mask, when I adjust the mask? If I'm out in public and this mask isn't sitting right, uh, am I touching this with a clean hand or am I touching this with a gloved hand that has been touching all other public spaces? When I take this mask off, I need clean hands. If I don't have a set of gloves to use, then I need to wash my hands for 20 seconds, carefully remove the face piece as to not deform it too much, and then take this face piece. I don't want to throw it on the counter because if you think about it, this face piece has been filtering out aerosolized particles containing the virus. That's its goal. It doesn't destroy the virus. It just sits there on the surface inside the matrix of the mask. If I take this and throw it on the counter, I have now just contaminated my counter. I've contaminated everything which brings us to your hands. If I take this off and I touch this, even with my clean hands, I'm gonna take this mask, I'm gonna put it into a paper bag. I'm gonna seal up that paper bag, write my name on it and put it off to the side. It's gonna be there for when I need it next. Now, my hands are contaminated again. I need to now wash my hands for another 20 seconds, all right? The reverse is now true. When I go to redoff this mask after it's been worn once, it is contaminated. I want to clean my hands as to make sure that I'm not going to contaminate my hair, my face, my eyes, any place that I'm looking to put this mask on. Hands must be clean. I adjust it. I make sure it fits well. Now I have to clean my hands again for 20 seconds because I am I have recontaminated my hands. This is probably the... The, the biggest key to using this face piece is to make sure your hands are clean when you take it on or when you put it on and when you take it off. Because if you don't, all you're doing is spreading the virus on your hands and you're going to be spreading it all over your face and head and you're going to be putting yourself in greater danger than if you just didn't use it at all. All right. That's all I have for you right now. Uh, Please, uh, if you like, you're more than welcome to share this video with anybody who is not a first responder, not in the medical community, or you know are wearing face pieces. Uh, it's vitally important. These are phenomenal tools, uh, but like any other tool, if it's used improperly, it can cause more harm than good. So really, really important to educate yourself on the type of mask that you're using how to put it on, how to take it off. And when we start using our gloves and we think about... Um, Things like the number of gloves that I have, I like the one hand technique because if I have only 100 gloves, that allows me to go out and touch public spaces 200 times. Uh, so it also helps expand my very limited supply of gloves that I have. That's all I've got.